has this ever happened to you? Okay, don't think about this too much. It's a bit of a headwind, a bit softer than usual. Of course the second one goes in. Or this. Throw it really soft, out wide, let the wind push it in. Oh god. Why didn't I just go forehand? Of course now it goes in. I wonder what it would be like if I could always play as player number two. What's up people? Hope you enjoyed that intro. To be honest, it wasn't first take. It actually took a while, believe it or not. Like and subscribe for the commitment. It helps me out a lot. But in today's video, I thought we would figure out if player two is actually a better player. And I've been requested to play this course quite a lot. So today we're out here at Ursvik, nine holes, and we're gonna play like two players. Two tee shots, and then we play from both. So let's get straight into the video. All right, hole one here is a 76 meter par three uphill. You can see the basket behind the trees over there. And I think the original throwing line is on the left side, but they've actually opened up the right side. So now you have a pretty straightforward spike Kaiser. So let's go for that. And to make this as scientific as possible, I'm always gonna throw what I would throw on my first throw. Because that's always what you do, and then you just pick up a random disc and then you ace it. Just like in the intro. So right here, I'm going with the method on a spike hyzer out wide. And it's inside, missed the trees. I almost aced it. I kinda went inside though. But now we just pick up a random disc. Let's go with the T-Bird 3 and throw it really high. Just crash it down at the basket. A lot higher, a lot wider. Oh, sit down. The wind pushed it. Still in the circle, much safer line. Both in the circle, so let's see. First shot actually went pretty far. So I'm just outside the circle here, starting off with a jump putt. Oh my god, the nose down. That was so bad. And then we just, oh no, I missed my putt. Oh, whatever, I'll just put this in. And of course it's in. Why? Why does it work like that? One hole in and already one shot up with play two. If you guys want to support me, check out Pug.se, get my merch, all of these options, like this shirt and this cap and this new bucket hat as well. Very nice. Also, check out bouncebackdiscgolf.com, link right here. For the best disc golf towels in the game, you can get all of these different patches and uh, towels and uh, funny quotes and uh, weird designs and yeah, a lot of great stuff and 100% the best disc golf towels in the game. All right, hole two, 51 meters uphill, OB entire right side beyond the fence, shouldn't be in play. We're going with the zone on a forehand. Just flick it up there. Mm, into the headwind, sit. That's a tester. <laughs> and then we just pick up something. I'll go with the Challenger OS, player two. I'm going backhand instead, sit. Better shot, but I think that was way too far actually. The headwind kept it up, so it was really glidy. I don't actually know where my second shot ended up. I will start with this one and then we'll see where I am. That's a good putt. Maybe player one can catch a stroke here. Never mind. Of course, the disc just sat right there because it's player two. Player two, still perfect. Hole three, 44 meters, ending towards the right. Pretty straightforward forehand shot. And I don't know if I'm going Barry or Zone right here. Maybe Zone is better to get that hard finish. So let's go with the Zone on the first one. Inside. Ooh. Probably like six, seven meters. I probably just should have gone with the Barry. Let's see. Almost hit the basket, of course. Birdie, then player two, tapping. Hole four, 88 meter, par three, uphill. By far the most difficult hole on the course. And I think my normal play on this one would be to throw a essence towards the left side, get it to drift right the entire way. So let's do that. Flip more. Oh my God, the branch. That was unlucky, looked good. But then for player two, let's go for more of a heiser flip up down the middle with the forge function. Flip more. Ah, oh, that's close to two bad shots, unfortunate. But then player three comes out of nowhere and throws the shrike. Of course. <laughs> player two was lucky enough to just stay in the middle over here, but I think player one has a tougher approach. Let's give it a bit of a bid right here with the batty forehand. Too short, nice line though. Never mind. Player one actually has a easier approach, but now I don't have my batty. So let's go with the Challenger OS on my forehand instead. Oh, pulled it. 
yeah, a bit long. I wanted my Barry. Should still be a par. Player two with another tap in. And of course, player one in the worst possible place. I think I have to go through and under here. Still in. But then player three with a horrible putt, but still a birdie. <laughs> I have a theory though on why it always works out like this and I think it's because when you play as player one you're throwing your first shot you don't know the wind you haven't felt out the shot and you're basically guesstimating all the variables that could affect your shot but then as player two you have the experience from the first shot and then you know what you did wrong and what you should do different and then it's easier but now I'm playing as player one and two and then I'm thinking about both the shots but then player three just came up, didn't think about the shot and just got the birdie. I think that's why player number two normally is a lot better than player number one. On a putt like this, for example, on my first putt, I'll be like, I'll be thinking about the wind. I'm thinking about the downslope behind the basket. I could get a roll away and I'm just thinking about so much stuff. Uh, did I leave it short? And then I'll be like, oh no, why did I do that? And then I'm not thinking about anything and just putting it in the basket. Because then I don't care about the rollaways, I don't care about the wind. Well, you can still think about the wind, but you get a feel for it on the first shot. So that's why it's easier on the second one. And I think that's why player two is the best player in the world. Hole five, 59 meters, very tight line. You could go for a backhand in the inside gap here, but I think the normal gap is to go for a forehand flex out here. So let's play the hole as it was designed to play and go with the T-Bird 3 on a forehand flex line. Oh my god, of course! The only tree in the way. <sighs> and then player number two just grabs a disc and goes for the local route. <laughs> this is sad. Still a chance from over here though. No! Need more Annie. And I almost threw it in with player two right here because I know what I did wrong on the first one and I tried to correct. Player number two for the birdie. And player number one for the par. Hole six, a very special hole. 36 meters downhill and it just keeps on going downhill the entire way. Let's give it a floaty ace run. Sit down, hit the tree. Thank you, should be a birdie. And that almost went in. Player one with an easy birdie. But player two with a tester from down here. No, it's so uphill. <laughs> so hard to give it that much height. But that means player one got one stroke back. Hole seven, another par three, 68 meters uphill. A pretty basic forehand hyzer. So going with the FD3 here, try to go for an ace run. That was a bit high. I think it's a left to right wind that pushed it really high. And then player number two has the advantage of knowing that. So I'm gonna throw it a bit lower with a bit more of an overstable disc. I didn't see where it ended up, but it's a lot closer. Let's throw some more and try to get the ace. T-Bird three, that looks good. Come on, push, go in. What? Was it close? I don't know. I can't see, it felt close. Let's go for a backhand as well, try it out with a really flippy Luna. That was easy. A real tester here for player number one. But it's no problem. Let's go. Player number one for the win. And then player two with a much easier putt. Two birdies. Hole eight, a really short par four, but the angle is so weird that you basically can't do anything better than this. So let's do that one more time. Both should be perfect. I don't know. Player one got a unfortunate roll, but player two in the perfect spot. But I actually want to throw the battery from over there, so I'm just gonna mark it with another disc. Going battery here, a soft flex line. That should be perfect. And then player two with the zone instead. That should also be perfect. Actually, really short with both. Got stuck on this log right there. So tester putts for both. But this is player number two. And I missed, so maybe we can tie it up right here. But maybe that's unfair, because I went for play number two first, and then for play number one. So maybe I should have done it the other way around, and then maybe it would have been the other way around. Because now I had the feel for the putt for play number one, instead of play number two. All right, tied up for the last hole. Hole nine, 88 meters, straight ahead. OB on the right side on the path, otherwise pretty straightforward. And here I'm going with the method. Just keep it straight the entire way. It's pin high, but I should have a headwind putt, so could be scary. For player two, let's go with the T-Bird 3 instead. Fight the wind and try to keep it on the left side of the basket so we don't have a headwind putt. Or go in. Oof, that was so close. 
just under the basket. Went way too far though. I thought the wind was gonna push it down when it came to a heiser, but it just kept on pushing. So that's a tester. Advantage player one. All right, C2 putt for player number two here. And this is the deal breaker because I have a pretty easy putt now. The wind kind of died down. So should be a birdie for player number one, but player number two for the birdie. Nope. Chain out, which means player number one has a chance to win. And now because I'm scoring for both players, I'm kind of thinking about my shots for player number two as well, which I wouldn't do if I'm doing an extra shot, like normal. But here's player number one for the win. And he's the winner. Minus six. Kind of bad round, but minus six and minus five for player number two. But that's been it for this time. Remember to like, subscribe, click the bell, and comment down below what you want to see next. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.